So Table 3 summarises, as I said, it summarises most of the criteria that are discussed in the document. So start there first. However, the document really does expand on these criteria, so read that in detail. Field monitoring is tough, it's unpredictable, but it's where these treatment systems operate every day, as Al said. Um, and whilst lab testing will provide repeatable information in a controlled environment, that's exactly what isn't there in the field. Um, as you can see in this figure, natural events like this one um, have a variable hydrograph where a pump typically provides a plug flow, which is the, the red line in this case. Yes, you could use a variable speed pump and you could program it with a, a variable hydrograph like this, but then you have to dose your sediments and your phosphorus and your nitrogen as your pump changes. Um, and that's a level of complexity that talking to most of the labs that I do, um, many of them aren't, even, aren't prepared for that yet. So a minimum amount of rainfall has also not been set. Um, and the reason for this is because it'll be driven by the amount of sample required by the laboratory. The, um, that and the fact that um, your catchment will produce um, runoff depending on uh, the impervious fraction of your catchment, your land use type, um, a small storm on a large catchment might produce enough runoff to give you a valid sample to take to the labs, but a small storm on a small catchment might not. So um, rainfall depth is, is really not a surrogate. So um, it hasn't been put into the protocol as a pass or fail criterion. The protocol requires testing over at least 12 months to incorporate seasonal variability. Following feedback from the Swinburne uh, University peer review, the protocol also specifies a minimum of 15 compliant events and 90% significance on the differences between the data sets, so the statistical difference between the data sets. So even if the data sets are statistically different with fewer events than 15, there has to be an has to, there has to be a minimum of 15 events over 12 months. Now, if 15 events over 12 months are tested and 90% statistical significance can't be demonstrated, then the claims that are submitted for assessment might need to be modified and justified in the detailed performance report. The alternative is that you might continue to test until that statistical strength improves but the protocol doesn't insist that you keep testing to get that 90% significance. Because for some um, pollutants and on some locations, that might take 300 events to, to achieve. So um, the, the protocol recognises a pragmatic endpoint there. Another scenario might be that um, you're testing a site for 12 months and you capture 20 compliant events during that 12 month period, because that's your minimum period. The protocol suggests a minimum of 15 um, events to be submitted. So you ask, well, could that lead to cherry picking of data? And I guess, like we all know, a, a well-known car manufacturer, if, if someone wants to gain the system, they will look for and exploit the loopholes. Um, but I've got some pretty good faith in the, um, the qualifications of the the candidates and nominees on our independent evaluation panel, um, and I'm pretty certain that um, they will identify that the environment doesn't produce straight line and perfect correlation. So um, I'm pretty confident that that will be caught by the, the IEP. And look, I suppose personally, would you really want to risk spending all that time and money um, to submit it? and have the auditors expose a fraudulent claim and reject the application. That, to me, that, that's a pretty big risk to take. 